Hi everybody, it's your girl Tash. How is everybody doing? Do hope that you guys have been taking good care of yourselves. I know I've been MIA for a while, but if you want to know what's been going on with me, where I'm at and what I'm doing, please look at this video and of course you'll be updated. Of course there's so many more videos to come, but after listening to this one, you'll understand why they're being so slow. Hi guys. How's everybody doing? I do hope that you guys have been good. Um, I know you've been wondering what's going on with this girl. She just disappeared. <laughs> well, to be honest, um, I just got really, really busy and I could not find the time to upload anything to YouTube. I'd actually done a video um, that I wanted to upload for you guys, but it uh, between all of the running around and stuff, it just got really, really, really busy. So, just to give you an update, what's been happening? So, um, uh, for the last year, last year, I have been working on a radio show with, um, a friend of mine um, and um, that didn't go through it was supposed to go through in November but that didn't go through so um, things quickly changed and of course um, some of you who know me would know that I really am you know trying to stay in tune with what God is telling me and somehow it would seem that God was leading me back to this place. Um, so, the week before that even fell through, I had already um, received um, some interest from my company, Norwegian Cruise Line, to come back out to work. Anyway, so um, I called them back made arrangements to have a contract so my contract was set to begin January 8th. Um, in December I got a couple of phone calls to start working again so I did start working again in December um, at the Hyatt Regency and I did a Christmas day at the Hilton Hotel in Trinidad um, so it was, it was quite busy, it was quite a busy time and of course, you know, Christmas is a different season so getting ready is always uh, requires a little bit more rehearsals than just, you know, going out and just singing. So I got really busy with the rehearsals for Christmas time and I was very, very busy trying to get all of my paperwork ready for leaving the country in early January. And let me tell you, there was a lot of things to read and a lot of things to fill out. And then I had to go get my medical done. And, and you know, it was just so much, so much, a lot of stuff. But, you know, it was just so busy and still trying to get my home ready for the Christmas holiday, which <laughs> didn't really happen until um, the first week of January when I was almost ready to go. I am. Um, I was able to get everything done by the 5th of January when I actually had a dinner for my family um, because I missed, of course, Christmas lunch and, you know, all the other things that, you know, my family would have had over the Christmas season I was at work, so, so, um, so that was that for December, I was really busy, and then once we got into January, um, things just went even faster. So I worked on the weekend, the first weekend of January, which was um, Old Year's, New Year's, and then the second. So I did that whole entire weekend, and then it was just kind of getting ready to pack up and leave. Um, at one point in time, I was uncertain about whether or not we were going to leave because we started hearing stuff in the news about ships that had to be halted to stop cruising because of so many people on board with the virus and all of that. So, and the company was not writing anything, so I assumed that we were not going to go anymore. I kind of started to relax a little bit. And on the 5th, I had a dinner for my family at my house. And um, that very night, at around 10 o'clock in the evening, I 
received a, um, a message on Instagram from one of my colleagues who said, check your email, we got flights. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? So we got the flights and I was not so excited anymore because I was kind of like, what's going on? You know, you, you guys didn't write all week what's happening and then you just send us a flight like two days before we leave. So, but still I knew that, you know, God was in control and he knows all things and he's, you know, ordering my steps. So I said, fine, whatever, I'm, I'm just going to pack up and get ready. So for the next two days I was running around trying to finalize all the things that I needed, trying to get my checks in the bank, go, go and collect the checks that I still had outstanding and stuff like that. So. Um, so anyway, so I get to the airport on the 8th and um, I check in online. I'm flying with KLM from Port of Spain to Amsterdam um, and then Amsterdam to Paris, Paris to Brest in France. So I get to the airport, a girl um, is checking me in, she takes my documents, my immunization card, um, and then she asks, do you have your health declaration form? And I was like, what health declaration form? And she's like, oh, you have to get one of that to enter France. And you also need to get a passenger locator form filled out. And I can't check you in until you have those things. And in my brain, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so anyways, I went online and I found it. And let me just tell you, I was so stressed out trying to fill that out in the airport. But luckily, thank God, my phone is like a little office anyways i have a scanner and docusign and adobe print inside and all of these things on my phone so i was able to download the form and fill it out and sign it and um and get everything ready and the girl at the airport was so disgustingly rude she was so rude 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 as i understand it they don't really work for the airlines but they work on behalf of the airlines to check people in so they're extremely rude at the airport in piaco international airport they were not nice at all none of them were they were disgustingly rude um there was a young man though who was uh, doing the wrapping of the, the luggage and stuff. He was so kind. He was actually there trying to help me. And I was like, it's okay. But he was very, very um, friendly and very kind and very helpful. Um, what else? So I left Trinidad and I went to Amsterdam. We had an overnight flight. And left Amsterdam a couple of hours after to fly to Paris um, and the flight to Paris was a little bit delayed it was a little bit late so by the time I arrived in, in, in Paris it was just to run to my gate quickly to meet my colleagues who were already there um, and get on the flight for Brest so we got on the flight and we arrived in Brest we stayed at a hotel overnight where we had to quarantine in that hotel room until the next day Two of them had to stay a little bit longer because they were flying from the UK and the UK is on the on the France's list of you know countries that has like a lot of COVID cases. So um, we got on the ship on the 9th around three in the afternoon and then we had to quarantine for like ten days. Um, so I had gotten to like five days of my quarantine and it's a whole long story, I don't even want to get into it, but um, let's just say that I was not a happy camper in that cabin, and um, I, I, I started to feel really congested in my nasal cavity, and I called the nurse to come and give me a swab, and she came and she swabbed me, and then she called me back a little bit later on to say that the test was actually positive. So, yeah, so now they say that I'm COVID positive and I had to be in isolation for an additional 10 days on top of what I had already, you know, um, done. So, yeah, um, so that's that. So right now I'm 
section in isolation and I'm on day three of my isolation out of the new 10 days of isolation that I have to do. Um, I understand that some of my other cast members are arriving so some of them would be out of isolation um, soon and some of them would still be in isolation by the time my isolation is done. So I'm just excited to get back to rehearsals. I'm just excited to get back on stage and to start rehearsing again. And, um, yeah, this is a whole different environment now. It's, it's very different to what we're used to. Um, I don't know what it's like yet outside of this cabin because, like I said, I've been quarantined since I got here. So, you know, thankfully, luckily, um, the symptoms that I have are, I have only one symptom actually, and it's quite mild. I have just this congestion, as you can hear, and um, I think it would have been a lot better if I had a cabin where I had a balcony that would allow me to get some fresh air, but um, all the cabins with the balconies are being refurbished at this time. So, hence the reason I'm stuck in a cabin with a porthole. I'm thankful for the porthole, of course, um, and I'm just not just locked up in a dark cabin. Um, but yeah, I would have preferred to be in a cabin with a balcony. That would have definitely helped um, my mind as well. So, I just wanted to stop by and give you guys an update of what's been going on with me and what's been happening. And, I have not been seeing much of me. And the other thing is, on on this ship, we are somehow blocked out of YouTube. So we can actually log into YouTube, we can actually use YouTube on board. So what I'm doing is actually recording these videos. And then when we get, you know, a chance to get out on the port or, you know, on a different network, then I'll be able to upload these videos to YouTube so you can see what's happening. So uh, take care of yourself, I have a good week, and hope that you guys remain healthy, remain happy. It's your girl Tash, so hey, ciao for now. We'll talk soon.